Welcome Nashville Software School students. This video is going to cover array functions, all different kinds of methods that you can run on an array to achieve some pretty cool results. We're going to start off with some simple ones, and then we're going to move on to more advanced ones that can let you iterate over the array and create new arrays and create new values out of it. All right, so here in my code, I've got an array, variable name of colors, it's an array of strings. Yeah. Let's look at some pretty simple methods that you can call on this array. First one we're going to cover is reverse. All this does is reverse the order of the items in the array. So when I run this, teal is going to be first, red is going to be last. Let's see. There we go. Pretty straightforward. Reverse the items in the array. Let's sort the items in the array. What sort does is it looks at the first character of each item in the array only the first character, and we'll sort that numerically. So R and B and G and yellow and O and T, those all have actual numeric values in what's called the ASCII character set. So it's going to compare all those numbers and then sort them in ascending order. Let's look at the output of this. Okay, there you go. Alphabetical order, ascending order. That's pretty straightforward. The problem is, is when we start doing integers, remember, sort looks at the first character and sorts things based off of that. Let me get rid of this callback function to begin with and show you what happens here. Now, you would expect it to be 5, 8, 10, 19, 20, 30, 100. That's not what's going to happen. Here you go. Okay, you can see the pattern here. It's only looking at the first character, so it's sorted that only that so that's why it looks out of order so you can pass a callback function to sort and then inside that callback function you're going to tell it what to do with each item in the array to determine if it's going to swap those values or not so here I'm just returning second minus first okay so that's going to return a negative value or a positive value so let's show you what happens here turn second minus first so it's going to basically the first time through it's going to be 10 minus 20. What's happening here? I'm sorting actually in descending order. Certain ascending order. First minus second. Okay. That'll sort in ascending order. So remember that when you want to sort numbers, use a callback function to determine which way you want it to be sorted to perform an actual mathematical calculation. Next thing we're going to cover, join. Take all of the items in an array, join them together into a string. You pass join one argument. It's going to be a string itself, and that's what's going to delimit every item in the array. So what happens when I pass it? A comma. There you go. There's all the items in the array with a comma in between. And that could be anything. It could be a comma. It could be a question mark. It could be a word. Doesn't matter. It'll inject that between every single item in your array. So there we go. There's join. Create a string out of an array. Let's talk about slice. And since we're talking about slice, I created a brand new array called fruits. So we're going to slice up these fruits. So this actually does modify the array itself. So slice takes two arguments, where to start, which index value to start at, which index value to end at. It's going to take those items, pull those out of the array, and put them into a new array. Okay? So it actually creates a new array based off of the ones that you pull out of the original one. So we're starting at 1, 0, 1. So it's going to pull out orange. We're going to stop at 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. All right, this is where we stop. So we're going to pull out orange and lemon. This is what the output should be. Brand new array with just those items pulled out. Let's see. There we go. Orange and lemon. Let's go for one more. This will be orange, lemon, and, and apple. How about if we just want to pull out mango? All right. Zero, one, two, three, four. Check this out. If you just pass in where you want to start, it'll go all the way to the end of the array. 
And since I actually put in the last item in the array, that's all it's going to pull out. So to show you how that works, I'm actually going to put in orange again, which is index one. Since I give it no end value, it's going to go all the way to the end. There you go. It pulled out every single item, starting at one, all the way to the end. All right. So say so there's slice. Pull out items from an array, create a new array out of them. This one's fairly straightforward. Let me move move colors down since we're going to continue to use it. Index of does exactly what you think it does. It returns the index of this value in the array. So what is the index, the string of orange? Zero, one, two, three, four. We should see output of four now. There we go, that's exactly what we see. All right, so there's index of, pretty straightforward. So, split. I'm gonna duplicate this, put this down because split is kind of the opposite of join. So here I take the colors array, I join it together to a string. Each item is going to be delimited by a comma. And then I'm going to split it back out into an array again. And use that comma that I put in the string as the delimiter, saying this is what is breaking apart each item in the array. And it's going to look at that comma, everything between commas, it's going to create a new one, a new item in the array. There we go. There's our new color array out of the string. So join, turns an array into a string, split, turns a string back into it. All right, so those are fairly simplistic, very straightforward methods that you can call on a function. So we're going to get into more advanced ones where you actually use callback methods that you are going to send to the function itself to do what you want to do. So the first is for each, which you can think of pretty much as a straightforward replacement for a standard for loop. Okay, it's going to iterate over the array, and then for every item in the array, it's going to pass it into your callback function. So as it's iterating, okay, we're specifying the colors array. So it's going to iterate over it. It's going to take the current value and pass it in. For the first time through, this color variable is going to store red. Second time through, it's going to store blue, and then green, and then yellow, then orange, then teal. And all I'm doing inside of this is just console logging it. Okay, so just to show you how that works, there we go. Just console logging it. Pretty straightforward replacement for a for loop. So here I have examples for how it would have been. Okay, again, a pretty simple for loop in and of itself. Console log the current color that you iterate. Okay, so there's for each. Next, we're going to talk about map. Map does something a little bit different. Calling the map method on an array actually creates a new array. Again, it's going to iterate over that array one thing at a time. Then whatever you return out of callback function that you pass to map, that's what gets put into the new array. So you can modify each item, take that modified value, and put it into the new array. Meanwhile, you leave the existing array completely unchanged. So I've got some logic here to for every single color, for every single string in here, I'm simply reversing it. So here's something new you probably haven't seen before. I'm chaining array methods together. So look what's happening here. I've got my original color, okay? So color is the current item in the array that it's iterating over. Okay, so this is red the first time through. Remember what split does? So split or a string into an array. I then just say dot. Reverse. So I reverse the items in the array. So now I have an array of D and then E and then R. And then remember what join does. It turns an array into a string. I'm passing an empty string in there. So there's going to be no delimiter. So when this returns is a string of D, E, R. So I'm just reversing the string every time through. And you can use this not only for split, reverse, and join, but you can use it for these methods that we're going over now, for each, and map, and filter, and reduce, which we're gonna cover in a bit. You can chain those together as much as you want. And I'll show you a quick example of that. All right, so here's my reverse colors. There you go. Each string is reversed. So I modified the item that's in the original array, 
returned that value back out. That's what goes in the new array. So that's what map does. Here's its representation in a traditional for loop. Create a new array, split it, reverse, join the current item, push it into that new array. Let's save that, just so you see. I'll refresh this. Same values, okay? That's the exact same logic. One I simply put inside of a map function. All right, next is filter. So filter like map creates a new array. But what you return out of the filter callback function is not a modified version of the items currently looking at. You're going to return back true or false. If what you return is true, it'll take the current item that you're looking at. So the first time through this loop, again, here's our color. That's going to be a string of red. If I return true out of here, red will get put into the new array. If I return false, it won't. So filter returns true or false. True, current item goes in the new array. False, it does not. So here's my condition. Color.length. So first time through, red. Is it's length four? Nope. That's going to return false. So red does not get put into the new array. Next time through, blue. Blue dot length, is that equal to four? Yes. Now it'll return true. That means the string of blue gets put into the new array. So let me show you how this ends up. There we go. Only strings with values of, or length values of four get put into the new array. Yeah. So that's what the filter method does. Here's its equivalent in a traditional for loop. Same thing. Create a new array. Run a condition on each item in the array. If it passes that condition, push that item to the array. Same logic. All right. Last but not least is the reduce method. So the reduce method is going to take every item in the array and condense it down into one single value. So here I've got an array of integers. I want to find out what the sum of those integers is in an array. This is a perfect use for the reduce method because you're going to condense them all down into one value. So what the reduce method does is it looks at the previous item in the array, looks at the current item in the array, and then you're going to return whatever you want to do to it. So I'm adding them together because I want to find the sum of the values. So let's look at the first time through the reduce array. Okay? So obviously the first time through is going to be on item 51. There is no previous item. Okay? So what it does is it actually looks at 51 and 10, the first time through. Okay? Previous current. This will be 51. This will be 10. And what am I doing? I'm returning previous plus current. So this function, the first time through, is going to return a value of 61. That becomes the previous value. So previous here is now 61. What's the next item in the array? Oh, it's 62. Them together, that gets us 23. And 123 now becomes previous. So it just keeps doing this. So it'll add then 4, take the... 123 plus 4, 127 now becomes previous and over and over again. So that's how I'm coming up with the sum. So add those all together, you get 149. And here's its equivalent in a traditional for loop. Start off with a variable whose value is 0. Start iterating over my array, whatever the current item is. Add it to this value. We're just adding it up as we go along. So that's the purpose of the reduce method. Now, like I said, you could chain all of these together. So here's what we're going to do. Let's look at, I'm going to create a new array of words. Words. Some words. I'm going to create a new sentence, but I don't want any words in the sentence whose length is only two. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to loop over this. And I'm going to filter out words that have a length of two. So words.filter. Okay. 
first thing I'm going to do. So filter takes a callback function. So we're going to write a function in here. What do I want to filter out? I only want to return true if the length is greater than two. Okay? So return word dot length is greater than two. Where does word come from? Remember, with these callback functions, it's going to take the current item. JavaScript itself is going to take the current item and pass it to our callback function. So there's our input, word. Return word dot length is greater than two. If that's true, it'll go in the new array. So since we're creating a new array, we have to store that. So I'm going to store it in a variable called sentence. So let me log that. Sentence, sentence. Okay. So there's a new one. On the hand worth to the bush. All right. Now I actually want to create a sentence out of this. I don't want it to be an array. So I want to build a string. Just one string out of all this. So I want to take every single item in the array, and in the end, I want one single value. That sounds like a good purpose for a reduce. Okay. So whatever that filter function returns, we're going to then use reduce on it. Reduce also takes a callback function. Reduce is going to look at the previous and the current item in the array. So what do I want to do with each one of these things as we go through? I don't want to add them together, right? Because adding is for numbers. Well, you can add strings together, right? Plus a string plus a string. What it does is it concatenates them together. So what if we just do that? Let's return just previous plus current. Okay? Works on strings just as much as it works on numbers. Let's see what happens. It did push them together, but we also want spaces in our sentence. So all we have to do is concatenate in another blank string with one space in it. There we go. One the hand worth to the bush. And this is all one continuous statement. Words dot filter. Here's where that filter function ends. And I just said dot reduce. They are completely chained together. So let me join these. Just so you can see it in one kind of continuous length here. This is one JavaScript statement, even though we call it two separate methods on the array. So this is what's called chaining these methods together. So hopefully this is a good overview of array functions, and we will see you in class.